Oh, I gotta hit the microphone. I'm not ready to talk yet. Oh man, my buddy Matt from Rock the Watch had an abscess tooth, had to go to the ER. That is, that is hardcore, man. Hopefully it heals fast for you. Mm. Whiskey might help. I don't know. You know, cleanse and clean everything inside. Oh, yeah. If you get that infection, that's, that's super hardcore. Wow. All right. I'm assuming you guys can hear me. Everything's good. Nate Dog is here. Of course, Dane is here. A bunch of the regulars are here. A few people still rolling in. Dave's checking in from Montana. Fedora Gents here. Nick P. Midwestern Watch Dudes here. Uh, I know I'm going to miss some names. Sorry, guys. Michael's here. Jable's checking in from Houston. Larry C. is here. Dane says he can't hear a, th a thing about nothing. So you can't hear me? Mic check, mic check. You can't hear me? Can you guys hear me or no? Is this thing on? I didn't do an audio check. Oh, Fedora John says you can hear. Maybe today I get to kill a troll. I haven't killed a troll for a while. Well, it might still happen. Oh, man, 435 movement is a decent movement. Um, yes. Actually, Michael, I prefer – that's a that's a solid question. And it's not talked about at a great length. Uh, my buddy Joe Smokes checking in. Thanks for joining us. Um, personally, I've had better luck and prefer the 4R series of Seiko movements over, say, the 6R and maybe even some other ones. So – um, are they are they decent? I think they're beyond decent. Uh, I actually kind of prefer them. So it's not going to make it so I don't buy a Seiko with a 6R or an 8L or something like that. Those are fine movements as well. But the 4R is just pretty dang sorted. Brave Sailors here. Uh, Mini Pelotons here. Ginger Down Unders, uh, holding off on a shower. Love the 4Rs. You can buy a micro brand, uh, and a local watchmaker can fix them. Yeah, so they'd be, N they'd be the NH series. Uh, if they're a micro brand, it wouldn't be a 4R. 4R is the movements that Seiko actually labels, and then the NH would be like uh, their, what they sell to the masses. Let's see here. Chris YZ80 is here. says, Rob is a 38 millimeter Helsin Shark Diver 2 girly man. I like the 2893-2 GMT. You wear mostly large watches. I know you could wear a 38 millimeter, but I think when you go with a Helsin Shark Diver, you're probably going to want the 40, maybe even the 42. I think 38 over time, you're going to, uh, determine that it's just a little too small. Oh, I just got an email from RT from uh, Fortec. Um, anonymous watch guy. NH35 is non-Seiko. Yeah, so uh, that's a little confusing to some people. It's a Seiko movement, but it's marketed towards non-Seiko watches. But it is a Seiko movement. What do I think of Yamaha watches? I think they could be better. And they could be easier to work with and all kinds of things. I, I like the brand. I like some of the designs, but I wish they were better. And let's see. Eric is wearing his 43 and a half millimeter Oris Aquas today. That is a great watch. That is the correct size. Any other size is the incorrect size. I'm biased, but I'll let you guys kind of steer the conversation i have some watches uh, we can actually show them a little better so i have some watches on the table uh greg wood just texted me and says are you live yes i'm live 
Let me text them back. Yes. Wait, I texted the wrong person. Yes. There, I texted Greg Wood. Okay, so on the table, uh, you can see. So I have here. I have the the Dryden that I that I bought at uh, Warner Wound Wind Up Watch Fair in Chicago. Um, we'll get to some other questions. Um, this is the Islander that I also bought a while ago. Here's a Dryden that that I bought that I bought. Uh, here's a Raymond Whale. The Kermit Oris. I know a lot of people are excited to probably see this. I don't know mess back here. There's the Kermit Oris. Very cool. And that Saltzman sent over that watch. They also sent over this Eco Drive Solar Quartz Citizen Diver. Now here's the Dryden that here's the Dryden, the Islander, the Dryden, the Islander, and the Raven that are co-sponsored yeah it's out of focus it's it'll try to focus it's probably because i'm messing with the screen so um they co-sponsored a giveaway so it'll be this guy this guy this was my pick of three from the watch show under a thousand dollars and this guy so all three of those, after I do the video and talk about it and everything like that, I will do a giveaway on those. So pretty excited about that. Also, I just picked up from meeting somebody at the Warner Wound Windup Show, an LA dial 42 millimeter Weiss field watch cat, uh, latte dial. And then, of course, it is a manual wind. So I think I'm going to order a new leather strap for that. Oh, yeah, and the G-Shock. Yes, Dwight, thank you. Um, and the G-Shock, this G-Shock. I forgot about that. So there's that guy, too. Because that doesn't count. That's right. So that's kind of what's on the table. And then there's the, um, I don't know why he keeps trying to autofocus. There's literally nothing moving. So is that a color different on the wise? Yeah. So that's the latte dial. La -di da. Oh, SPG565 says he has the 38 millimeter also in the latte dial. La -di da. I'm thinking of picking up, the watch verdict says, I'm thinking of picking up the Aquastar Deep Star Chrono. Anyone have experience with them? They look damn cool to me, 39 millimeter. I haven't played with that one, but I do have this Aquastar right here. And I have to say, it's, it's, a, it's a very good watch. I would say it's on par with like the Yamas and the Nevada Gretchen and all those. Um, so... Yeah, I, I say go for it. I don't know how much they cost. Uh, actually, we could probably we could probably look it up. Aqua Star. So if we go to share screen, and then go window, and then go here, share, and then no, we're not going to subscribe. But there's the one I have, the Model sixty re edition. Fedora Gent says it's it's gorgeous. I've worn it well made. So that's good. So collection, I think you said you're looking at the Deep Star Chronograph. Okay, so it's a it's a similar looking watch. Oh, you know what? I think I know a couple of people that have these. Fedora Gent actually probably tried it on. It's actually um uh he says John P has one of those, but doesn't um in our group uh yeah, John Page, John P. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. I don't know which colorway he has. I think he has, does he have the blue one? 
I don't remember what color. That's actually a very cool looking chronograph. Uh, not cheap. Basically 2,900. Oh, there's only 300 of them. Yeah, I don't know. Go for it. We have a super chat from my buddy Will says, five dollar hair super chat more Mimo beer money. We're getting close. We are getting close. Um, what are we looking at here? This is the last day of July, and we're going to be going to Mimos on the last weekend in August. So that's like like four weeks away, essentially a month away, just less than a month. So. We will be there before you know it. Um, well, I'm looking at Aquastar because somebody brought it up in the chat. I'm not looking to pick one up myself, but uh, oh, okay, yeah. So you mentioned the Synchron, right? So Aquastar, Synchron, um, Isoframe, th that's all the same owner. Yeah, the single sub dial, but then you also have that other little register over here, too. I don't know. So that might be running seconds that just spins. This is your chronograph hand, and then this is your 30-minute counter. I'm assuming that's what it looks like. Fedora Jan says, uh, yeah, Mimos is soon. Told him to stock up on Bulova and G-Shock. I'm sure he's stocking up. Paul, who I met in Chicago, said he would like to pick up that Oris Kermit. Um, well, there's one right there. I can probably get you a deal on it. The watch verdicts is not cheap. That's why I wanted some suggestion. Thanks, brother. I can reach out to him and see if I can get one in for a video review. Uh, maybe I'll do that because that is a very good looking watch. And I think at a 39 millimeter, I think it'll wear pretty dang amazing. <laughs> uh, this is Tim being funny. He says, meh, buy the Dryden and use the extra money on a Manta. He's just being funny on that. Agree, Dryden is better in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if the Dryden's better. It's definitely a better value, but it's also quartz. Uh, All right, so I was looking. How many people are here? 82. Let's take a quick glance. Eric would love to try a Breitling. Oops. I would love to try a Breitling Heritage 57 Diver. We can take a look at those real quick. Oh, except watches. Greg is texting me. I already forgot what you said. Bring it back up here. The Breitling Heritage 57. I don't know what that one looks like off the top of my head. I just had that one in, the Avi. 1964. Is it a current model? I don't know if it's a current model. Navo timer. I think we're out of chronographs. Oh, there's more. There's Avengers. Oh, here we go. There's the Heritage. Which one? I'm not going to be able to keep up. Oh, the diver, the 57 diver. Do they, where's the bigger sizes though? Do they have the? Oh, there we go. So you're talking like these ones here. The blue would look good. I, the mesh would probably be a really good strap they're actually i don't want to say it's not a lot of money because it's definitely a lot of money fifty two hundred dollars you're probably going to get a discount
they look like they wear really thin and everything. So I can check with Saltzman's about getting one of these in for a video. I've never videoed one of these. So that would be kind of a fun video to do. It has oval indices. Oh, I did the rainbow one. Mm, did I? Okay. I don't know. Let's go look because there's like 83 people in here. So it's not a huge thing. Let's look at the Random Rob Discord. Let's see what watches are available for sale. Most of the people in the chat are already in the Discord, but a few of you aren't not in the Discord. So maybe you are curious to see what kind of watches go for sale in there. Keith is selling that U-boat for $300. And that thing is haunting me. As weird as it is, I know like that's definitely a hate it or love it type watch. And a lot of people definitely hate it. Uh, but it is like, it's quirky cool. I'm really digging it. It's oil filled, but this is one of the newer ones. So it has on the backside, it has a separate compartment for changing the battery. So you don't have to... Um, send it in and have the oil like drained and refilled on the battery change. So this is the one to get. And at $300, that is an incredible deal. Uh, I mean, reality is even if you bought that for 300 and say you wore it for a little bit and you didn't really want it at 300. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you can find another buyer, maybe not, but I mean, you could basically rent it for a hundred bucks and then sell it for 200. I guaranteed somebody would soup it for that. Um, I'm very tempted to pick that one up from Keith. I've been watching it. He doesn't know that, but maybe he does now. Uh, let's see. We have a Seiko SRP G13, the Tortoise. And that one is $200. Uh, da, 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 da. We have a, a Planet Ocean. I've seen this Planet Ocean. This is a 42 millimeter. Now, before this one, the only other white on white I've looked at like that was in a 39 millimeter. It was a, a lot smaller Planet Ocean. This one's a full size Planet Ocean, white on white. I think I would like it more if it had a black bezel or a different color bezel, but the white on white does look good. It is a killer Planet Ocean in its 3000 or best. That is an insane deal on a Planet Ocean. It is a legit good deal. He's uh, Colorado Possum Todd is also selling his bronze green dial legacy series Zao watch. Very good. Very good watch. We have a Timex Q Snyder edition, 38 millimeter, 90 bucks. The Casio Oceanus S100. That's only 200 bucks. Guys, John Page is selling this for 200 bucks. This is an absolute must try. If you've never tried one of these, the Casio Oceanus, for 200 bucks, that is an absolute try. I cannot believe somebody in the Discord has not picked that up. That is a killer watch, amazing titanium, incredibly comfortable and accurate. And the, his picture doesn't capture it, but there's like little pops of blue on it and everything. It's, it's really good. Tennessee Mike says that's his old watch. So it's, uh, yeah, for 200 bucks, you can't beat that. He, John did sell his Hamilton Interstellar Pilot Day Date, so that's gone. Uh, here's a helm. This one's been worn a few times. Big watch, full kit, 345 for a helm. You don't have to wait. The Hamilton khaki sold. The Recon Sea Line sold. And the Alpina you can still get from Tim, 350 bucks. And it's a GMT. It's a, it's a quartz GMT. I don't know why these pictures are so blurry on here. Uh, Mark has the sale pending on his Swiss Watch Company USA. Pending on the Luminox. Rambo 180, who's actually in Australia, but he will ship it worldwide. Doesn't matter. 310 bucks on the bronze blue dial Notice Avalon. My buddy Joe and I actually bought that's Joe's old blue one. I bought the green one. I still have it. Now Rambo has it. Um, 
310 bucks. You can't beat that. Those are like 750 or something. They're not cheap. See, there's the back of that U boat. You can kind of see it has the separate compartments. I might have to hit up Keith on that. Homer is selling the Swiss Movement Islander GMT. It's in great shape, which is hard to believe from Homer, which means that he probably didn't wear it. 400 bucks. That's a, a crazy good deal on that, too. There's an Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot Big Date Gray Dial 41 millimeter. D. Schuler selling it for $775 with bracelet. Looks like it has some wear marks, but it has that same clasp system, like the aircraft seatbelt type thing. Pretty fun, pretty cool. Here's uh, Christopher Ward sold. That's a nice white dial, 40 mil. That one's sold. Need to um, delete those. Casio Edifice, that's sold. I know uh, Tuna, the other RS, has been trying to sell this guy here. It is a, I believe that's a, is that a Maurice Lacroix? I can't hardly read it. Enrique sold his Zelos. Here we go. Watch my pint is selling a Seiko turtle or the girdle, the gold. So this is the SRPC 44, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not very good with my Seiko numbers, but for some reason that one sticks in my head. And he has the gold bracelet to go with it for 575, maybe a little on the high end there. Uh, 395 for the Scurfa, also probably a little on the high end. Uh, I don't know anything about that brand. James McCabe, McCabe, Bobber, automatic, full kit, 45 bucks. Can't beat that price. Oh, no, it's, it's I was wrong. It's not a, it's, a, there you go. Thank you, Tennessee Mike. I found it. It's a Bomb Mercier, uh, Capelin chronograph on bracelet, 39 millimeter, watch only 500 bucks. So no box, no papers, but something a little different. Not my style, but. Seals Hammerhead. There's some gems on here for sure. I mean, the really killer stuff obviously sells. Um, there's an old Borealis. Oh, that's old. Never mind. If anybody's looking for the DW6900 NASA, there you go. You can pick one of those up. Mark sold a couple of things. Hey, there's an Aloha. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Pretty cool watch. The uh, owner of that watch is actually based in Hawaii. So, so Hamilton. Yeah, we're starting to get a little deeper here. There's still some watches for sale here. And that sold. There was a Moon Swatch on there that sold. MM10 sold his stuff. There's a Zen for sale. Okay. So anyway, that stuff sold. We can go back to the comments. And no, Mr. Zelos didn't buy the Aurora. I have a Batman. Hold on. Calico says, I have a Batman GMT. However, Coke has always had a special place in my heart. So if a Coke comes out, you'd probably pick that up. How much for the Zao bronze? Wasn't he at like 350 That was pretty... Early on in the, let me see if I can find it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 500, I'm sorry, 500. But that's like a $750 watch or something. And he would probably take a little bit less. I don't want to like speak for Todd, but like he would probably take a little bit less. 500 bucks, maybe a little less. Um, Dane says, no, he won't. Todd says 500. It's 500 bucks. I know those... At five hundred dollars, it's still a, a good deal. So, um, let's see. Oh, I'm gonna change my hat. So, real quick, I want to talk about. Let's go here. I'm thinking about. I don't know if anybody's interested. I've talked about this before in my in the Discord, but I, this is like the last brand new random rob hat see how it's all blacked out i think i'm gonna do a new run 
but I'm going to do the um, the ring, like my standard logo. I'm going to do an orange and then the RR will be in white. So it'll be orange and white, like my logo with the colors on the black hat. I think I'm going to do a run of those and see I'm a small run just because I don't want to do, I don't want to do another um, run of these ones again. I, I'm going to do something different. The R logo has to be prominent. Yeah, I, I like it blacked out like that. I think it's really cool, but uh, I think I'm going to do it in my actual colorway. I was looking at different colored hats, but I just like the black one. It just looks clean. Um, no trucker style. I don't know what that means. This is a ball cap. I don't, it, well, it's the low pro trucker. So if, if you don't like the low pro trucker, then I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't get it. RR and orange, camo orange. The camo orange hats are like bigger and taller. I don't like them. I like these low pro ones. I mean, I pretty much, if I do hats or shirts or anything like that, I Trucker has the mesh on the back. I, I like the mesh on the back. It's it's cooler. It's, I mean, I could do a solid panel one, but mesh back is Trucker. Okay. Uh, 47 hats. Uh, Chris, you'll have to message me on that. I'll have to look that up and see. I like these Richardsons, though. Who wears a mesh hat in cold weather? I, I do, Greg. I, I wear them like that in cold weather. So, and I'm actually outside in the cold weather. So I think maybe you need to toughen up a little bit there, bud. It's cold in Michigan, no matter. I, I wear them. I, I don't wear solid hats. I just don't. Fitted. No, I'm not doing fitted. Low Pro is the best fitting hat. I agree. I agree. These ones, I like these ones, and I like the Legacy hats. So... Now, what else are we going to talk about? Greg wants a Boston style hat. Well, Greg can do his own run of hats. I can work with him, and we can get we can get Woody hats or something. Greg Woody. Uh, Cali, cold hearted in Vegas. Okay, make Greg a RR beret. <laughs> Maybe I will. Orange is Tennessee, the volunteer, the volunteer state. Yeah, something like that. I would do the orange hat, but I don't. I won't wear the orange hat. So I wear the black ones. It's all about me, guys. I I do the clothing and the hats the way I want them. So here we go. Toyota or Honda. I would say, in my opinion opinion now it's going to depend on the model but i believe in my personal experience that toyota is actually built better than honda and i've owned more honda than i have toyota for sure but i currently own both i have two toyota and one honda so um depends on what you want to do but if you want a better car i would say toyota is a better car Uh, da, 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 like that. They use well, and they use them all over like that too. Toyota or taxi over there. You typically typically are not going to see like a Honda Civic or a Honda Accord as a taxi, whereas you'll see Camrys and hybrids and all that other stuff used as taxis, just because they they're just built better. Acura or Highlander. What do you, that's, you guys are crazy. We're not picking cars. I kind of took a, kind of took a break from leaving looking at cars. I did record yesterday. I did record a um, drive. So I'll post that this next weekend. But it was, I don't know. I'm already kind of like moved on. I still like to go do my drive and everything. But other than that, like, I don't know how much I'm going to do with it. I still might uh, do a couple little more mods. You know, nothing major, just big breaks, uh, 
uh, front mount intercooler, um, a, a tune, and maybe some other piping and um, some stainless brake lines, upgraded brake fluid, uh, new clutch. But other than that, I'm not really going to mod it too much. Okay. So. And then I'll sell it for a huge loss. Here we go. Dane says, get a Mustang. You'll thank me later, except for that insulting SUV piece of crap. That's an abomination. So I've owned a Mustang. I had a Fox body before. Uh, I did go look at the SN95 series. Um, I, they're just, they're too big of a car for me. I don't, I don't want that big of a car. I want something more lighter and more nimble. Tudor. Nate Dog says, Tudor, question mark. Um, so we can talk briefly about that. So I am actually looking at a Tudor watch right now. And I'm not sure I've, I've handled it before the one that I'm looking at, I've handled it before. And I even actually have a, um, I put it back in the package. But I have a, a Tudor 39 millimeter Pelagos. Yeah, right here. I need to uh, send it back to Josh. But I do have this Tudor. This is not the one I'm looking at buying. Although it is a really nice watch. I will say, yeah. Well, I just, I just put it on. I, I wear many hats. I wear many hats. So uh, let's see here. I think I have to push there. Like right now, I say this is, is great and it, will, it would totally work on my wrist. It would totally work. But I don't know if over time, if I would start to feel like it's a, a little too small on my wrist. I, and I am kind of in a, a weight loss right now too, but... Um, you know, I yo-yo on my weight, so like I don't. So the let's let's bring up my uh, other screen. How do I? There, let's bring this up. So let's go. Oops, oops, back up. Should type in random letters, and you guys can see what my search engine brings up. And yeah, anonymous watch guy. That's that's funny. Fiat, fix it again, Tony. Car, car uh, acronyms and uh, banter and stuff like that is pretty funny. So the, the new Peli FXD, I still have yet to handle one of those. Those are great looking. Greg says, focus, grasshopper. I'm all over the place. We're talking about Tudor. We're talking about Tudor right now. We're talking about the watch that I might pick up. So I know my buddy Will is actually looking at this guy. He's looking at this guy. And I am very curious to see this watch. The price point is appealing to me at $36.75. You are restricted to using a pass-through strap because it has it's a it's a carbon, right? It's a carbon case, titanium bezel carbon insert. Uh, let's see here. It probably wears amazing. It's probably super lightweight, super accurate. It's going to be anti-magnetic. It's going to have, uh, you know, 70-hour power reserve. I mean, it's a legit awesome watch. And you could do chronograph or I think, Will, I think you did pick a good one on this one. I do really like this one. Yeah, fixed lugs. So fixed lugs, meaning that there's no spring bar. This goes straight across and is part of the case, meaning that you have to fish a single pass or a double pass or whatever you want through there. This one looks like it's uh, like a Velcro. That, that strap is actually, the the strap that's included was actually probably very comfortable. That's, and I know everyone's going to be like deal breaker, deal breaker, but like Leslie saying, love the FXD. The FXD on that strap is probably an amazing everyday wear watch. And I think that's why Will is interested in it. I think he's definitely interested in um, having that level. And I don't think Will's ever really played at the, the higher level. So, and at $3,675, it's $3,700. That's, 
and it's a carbon watch. I mean, it's, that's a lot of money. So why would they ruin it? Tim's saying, why would they ruin it with fixed lugs? Because it's a purpose built watch. Meaning that they didn't, in your opinion, they ruined it, but they built it with the intention of it being a very secure watch for its intended purpose, meaning that um, you know, spring bars are a point of failure, 100%. Have I ever had one fail? Yes, I actually have. Um, did it cause catastrophic damage to the watch? Uh, in one case, it did. It wasn't me. It was my son. But um, I've never personally had one. So, And Will said he he's had an Omega fail on him. So, And it happens. I mean, it's... Think about what a spring bar is. They're pretty weak. So you got to make sure they're fitted properly. You need to test them. Um, yeah. So that, for a watch that you're going to wear, like, you know, he rides his bike to work and, um, you know, works in a very active environment and stuff like that. If he's going to wear it to work, I think that's going to be a safer watch to wear. That is not the watch I'm looking at. Tim says just get the marathon. It's only 200 bucks. Well, there's always a cheaper watch, just like there's always a more expensive watch. I do like these new black bays. They're a little bit thinner, and it has the uh, five link, so it's a kind of fancier looking. But what I am looking at is... If I can... Find it. Is it back up here? You know, it might be under. Maybe we gotta go collections. There's the Rangers, there's the Pro. I've owned the Pro. I do like a lot of these. Tudor watches. It's been a while since I've owned a Tudor. The last one I owned, I believe, was the Pro. I do like the GMT. Todd has, he's my rich friend, and he has one of these two-tone, he's got this one here, the two-tone Black Bay, like root beer style. It's only fifty-eight fifty, and then he's my rich friend because it's gold. That's actually a super, super cool looking watch. However, I'm actually kind of looking at this one here. And it, it, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Um, it's a ceramic case. I know the first thing everyone, well, don't drop it. Well, don't drop any of your watches. So first thing, like, have I dropped a watch? Yeah, but not like on the floor. I've dropped it maybe a little bit on the desk or something. So, yeah, I'm looking at this. I, I'm not a big fan of the price, if I'm being completely honest. Do I think it's not worth that price? No, I'm not saying that. It's it's worth that price. The ceramic case is always going to look new. I mean, chances are I'm pretty easy on watches. I'm not going to ever really scratch that ceramic The bezel action is amazing on Tudor. I really love the snowflake hands. I know that's a divisive thing with a lot of people. I like the dial layout with the uh, triangle, the circles, and the rectangles. You know, that's a very classic, iconic look. Um, the movement, the MT5602-1U, it is... It's not only COSC, but it's a Meta certified as well. So it's uh, plus two, minus two. So like crazy accurate. Anti-magnetic um, to 15,000 gauss. Same as the, the, the a lot of the newer um, Omega movements. It would be a solid choice. And I didn't, I posted it up in my Discord, but I was wearing my Unimatic, this guy which is, you know, it's a, it's not the same watch, obviously, but it's, it's similar in its appearance, being that it's a black case. 
you know, blacked out dial. The, the dial layout's very similar. The handset's different, obviously. And I ran into a guy when I was out for a drink with my wife and he was wearing that and we got to talk and I took a picture of the watches side by side. And I'm kind of digging it. I'm definitely, I'm digging it. Scott says you can pick them up for like 3500 bucks on Chrono24. I, I, this is going to sound stupid again. I know a lot of people don't like you know, buying new when you can just save money, like legit decent amount of money by buying pre-owned. And I'm not going to say I'm completely opposed to that, but I prefer buying brand new watches. I don't know why it's stupid. I get it. And, and I, I am kind of worried about what Greg is saying. I've seen that tutor in person. You would be so bored. I understand what you're saying, but I absolutely adore my Unimatic. Now, does that mean I'm going to enjoy the Tudor Black Bay Ceramic as much? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. You know, the Unimatic has a little more stuff going on with it. It's a limited edition with a collaboration with Exquisite Timepieces. I, you know, I, I, I like the guys at Exquisite Timepieces. I like the way Unimatic looks. It's made in Italy. Um, and it has that little pop of orange on there. The Tudor has none of that. The Tudor's not limited, although I don't want to say rare, but I know they're more difficult to make, so you don't see more of them, or you don't see a ton of them out in the wild. The reality is, is so what if I buy it for five grand, and I wear it, and then I decide I don't want it? I'll, I'm sure I'll take a bath on it, you know, I have to sell it for like three grand. I'll take a two thousand dollar hit on it. You know, is that okay? No, but I, I would I would recover from it. It would it would be fine. I, I I won't wear it on that strap that's included with it. I'll quite frankly I'll probably have it on an FKM rubber or some other leather straps or something. Paul says eighties are not offering discounts from my experience recently. That is correct. However. Um, Paul has great negotiating skills in certain environments. In other environments, I have good, great negotiating skills. So, Paul, uh, don't worry about it. I got it covered. Yeah, Michael, there's for sure. If it's a few hundred dollars, I would buy new. But saving $1,500, go pre-owned. Yeah, it totally makes sense, Michael. $1,500 is a lot of money. I mean, $1,500 is buy you one of those Unimatics. I think those are around there. There's a few Blackberry Ceramics on Chrono 24 for about 4000 That's what I was seeing, Todd. That's what I was seeing on the uh, used market was around 4000 Greg says, uh, I should get an S&G. They are unique. Maybe, but... Greg, maybe I pick up the Tudor Black Bay Ceramic, and that is kind of like my everyday work watch sort of thing, um, you know, along with the other 100 watches. And then maybe next year for my birthday or something, maybe I pick up a two-tone gold, and I can afford a two-tone gold with Tudor because they're not astronomically priced, even though Todd is my rich friend. So, for example... Um, honestly, I would probably go for that one that Todd has. I wish it was a little bit thinner, but it doesn't really matter. It still wears really good. I, I'm, I know a lot of people like the Royals. I, I wouldn't go with that. What else do they have? The two-tone. The Black Bay line, mm, a little too dressy looking for me. Yeah, I think I would go... And getting on bracelets probably the way to go. It's really not that much more. I guess it's like a thousand dollars more. I could, I could potentially see getting it on leather, and forego the the bracelet. But I, I think you kind of need this one on the bracelet. How do I go?
Black Bay GMT. Yeah, I think it needs to be on the bracelet. I could be uh, watch twins with uh, my rich friend Todd. Yeah, I mean, Greg, you might not be wrong. I don't want to see. I don't want to like be wavering on my decisions on this because maybe I'd be less bored with that watch, but also <laughs> Scott. What is Scott? Scott says, uh, Rob, take one for the team and get the Pelly Chrono. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Let's see, Fedora Gent says, Toppers Jewelers has one of those used Black Bay GMT SMGs and pre owned right now. All right, let's go check it out. Supposedly, Toppers owes me one. Because it's five grand. Uh, for a thousand dollars more, I'll just buy the brand new one. Now, if they, if I could redeem, because legit, they, they had like a mix-up, and they told me I don't feel remember. They told me they owe me one. So if they owe me one and like maybe knock five hundred dollars off that. Plus, I can get ten percent off that. Maybe I'd do pretty good with that. I hate their pictures, though. It it looks clean. Yeah. And I don't, maybe they cleaned it. Maybe they didn't. It doesn't really matter. See, I don't know. I look at it there, and I'm just like, eh. I think I'd get more bored with that. I legit think I would get more bored with that than the um, the ceramic. <laughs> Mike, LH Press has one that looks similar for two hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that. You guys are. It's such a weird way to think. But you speedy and said. Yeah, it's not. There you go, Tim. I think you're right. It's just not my style. Black case, black hats, hands. Black case. Oh, that, yeah, the hat. Nate Dog was wearing my uh, black on black hat at the uh, wind up show in Chicago. And the ceramic looks good, too. I don't know if they have. Just here, I'm just going to stay over there because I already have. I kind of already have a deal pending. I'm going to look at this chronograph, though. Michael says, only thing when ceramic fails, it's catastrophic. Yeah, but it's catastrophically cool, too. I mean, because it would be amazing contact. Because I would show it. I'd be like, yep, you guys are right. I, uh, you know, barely bumped the watch and it shattered into a million pieces. Here it is. Um I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't worry about stuff like that. So, I mean, all these watches are luxury items. Like, if you, I don't want to sound like, I don't know, whatever this might come across as. But, like, if you can't afford to own the watches you have and then potentially lose them, then you might want to reevaluate, you know, buying some of these watches. And, I, and again, I'm not saying like five thousand dollars isn't a lot of money. It's it's a lot of money, but also it's a watch and it's a material item. Like you understand when I say this, I mean it's like um, I come from the mindset of like I lost a house and all my contents in a house fire in 2012. So that changed my relationship with material things. Like they they come and go. Right? They just, they don't really, really matter. If you can't buy it twice and not miss the money. Ooh, that's. Mm, 
I would say that's fairly accurate to most of the watches I have, but at the five thousand dollar price point, I mean, I don't think I would buy it. <laughs> well, so I wouldn't buy it again. Is the thing if I lost it or it got broke or whatever happened, I probably wouldn't buy it again. Uh, so that's a that's a good looking chronograph. But how thick is it? Does it say, do you guys know how thick that watch is? Is there, do we have details on it? It's a 43 millimeter case. That's not terrible. I'd say I like the size and proportion on the ceramic one better for sure. Sam's dad says, uh, haven't left the house all day, but I'm wearing my tutor. That's so funny, like, that we just wear watches all the time. James Duffy says, I remind myself that it, if a watch is out of my budget, it was not meant for me. I want to live in a mansion, but I cannot afford it. So it is not for me. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Uh, Nate Dog, what's the missus input? I like my wife's opinions. I don't ask my wife's opinion on watches that I'm buying. Maybe a long time ago I did, but I mean, we're two completely different people and we have totally different taste. If I wore the watches that she really liked, they're not the watches that I like. And I, I buy the watches that I want to wear that I like. I, I don't I don't buy them um, to to get anybody else's opinion on it. So I mean I legit like I'll show her some stuff like I'll show her that green Kermit because that green is like her favorite color. So I'll show her that one. She's probably gonna love that one. But those that's all I show her is the stuff that I think she'll probably like. Nilo says, <laughs> better mind doesn't know. Uh, let's see. Jim says, uh, the Omega dark side of the moon is awfully nice. I agree. I agree. I wish I could afford to buy a lot of these watches. but um, and, and I probably could afford to buy them. Uh, he, he meant the gray side. The gray side is beautiful with the platinum dial. It is absolutely. Now, if I were to pick, I would actually go with the dark side of the moon. There you go. YZ80 says, when she wants my opinion, she tells me what it is. <laughs> uh, my grail watch is the VC222 when I retire, says Paul. Mm. Gray side is my favorite. Okay. So anyway, that's the watch I'm looking at. Will I buy it? I don't know. I really don't know. But like I said, I kind of have a deal potentially in the works. I search ceramic and nothing comes up. Okay. Uh, nope, diving watches. There it is. Oh, see, that's that's genius. That's like the next level thing right there, right? So, and we've all heard it. So like when we do kind of show, most of us are into dive watches and we'll show our wives the dive watches and the, they'll kind of look at you and look at the watch and then you're like, what? And they're like, uh, didn't you already show me that one? Like they, they're not honed into them like we are. So they look at them and they're just like, that looks like all the other watches you've shown me. So Imagine if if all I and I have a, a pretty large collection of just white dial watches, and then and then I have like a bunch of divers, so they kind of just all blend together. Uh, Nilo likes the LHD. I agree. That is a very cool watch by the Marine Master. Uh, I am not buying the the Marine Master Fortis. 
Yeah, the ceramic black bay is a bargain because they throw in a free strap. Both the straps that it's included with, I have almost zero interest in wearing. The That one, the best bulk one that's on there right there in the picture, that's a really nice strap. I probably won't wear it. And then the other one that's the fabric strap, it just adds to the thickness of the watch. I'm not wearing that. Uh, there's, this is why I don't, oh, here you go. This is why I don't answer questions about how much I paid for a watch. Saves a lot of grief. Well, Dane doesn't have to answer to anyone anyway. Most of us, uh, in the chat probably has, have wives or whatever. Um, Dane, I think there's a song about that, 99 Problems or something, you know, something's not one. So, What else do we got going here? All my friends think watch Oh shoot, that's solid right there. James says, all my friends think my watches are two hundred dollars and are too expensive at that. That is solid. One of the things I have written on my board, there I often get ideas to make videos that aren't just watch review videos. I get so bombarded, like I have piles and piles of watches I need to make videos on. But at some point, <laughs> Nate Dog, don't be sorry about the wife comment. I think it's it's great to involve your partner in your hobby. Um, and I do show my wife watches. I just don't ask her for opinions on it. I just kind of show her and, and I tell her I think this one's cool or something like that. But, you know, I'm not, she knows I'm not really looking for feedback necessarily. So... But on my dry erase board over here, I'm looking over to my right, there, I usually have a list of all the watches I need to make videos on. And to James' comment, I have one of the topics on there is I wrote down, no one cares about your watch. And it's basically what James is saying. Most people are muggles or whatever you want to call them. They're non-watch people. And non-watch people, when they hear how much time and money we spend on watches, it blows their minds. Now, some of those people might be passionate and have like very involved hobbies that would we would give the same response to if they explained to us of their Beanie Baby collections. But there's a ton of people out there that don't collect because... Um, collecting things is kind of a different way of life or a different, you know, there's, there's psychological characteristics that we have that lend us to some of these hobbies, whether it's, you know, analyzing and researching, obsessing, you know, guy from just blue, uh, video on this about the mental health side of things. Um, and he talked about it from his personal experiences with it. Um, but there's a, he was diagnosed with, or, and I know a lot of us probably have this to a certain extent, um, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, not OCD, but it's a personality disorder. And then, you know, I always say that most of us display somewhat manic behavior uh, with, and again, that it all probably ties together. And yeah, basically, I mean, SPG, basically, yeah, we're freaks. We're just freaks. Nerds, geeks, freaks, whatever. That's what we are. Yeah, here we go. Tim, like, uh, yeah, I don't know, flying to Chicago and spending $1,500 in expenses to save $500 in watches. Yeah, but it's, for some of us, like in that experience right there, Tim, you didn't fly to Chicago to save $500 in watches. You flew to Chicago to hang out with me and Josh and um, Nate Dog and, you know, all the guys and then talk to the brands and argue with Monta. And that's why you flew out there, right? It wasn't to save $500 on the watches, but that's a byproduct of being in the hobby. So that's just some of the stuff that, you know, we can spin it or however we want, but um, it's, it's a great, it is a great hobby. We've met a lot of great people. And Greg Wood, I didn't forget you. 
Uh, definitely also awesome to hang out with Greg, even though he bailed on us and went and sang karaoke and stuff like that. But that's fine. I don't hold grudges. I just never forget. Um, he, he, he definitely flew. We had that discussion, uh, debate, discussion, argument in the parking lot before the show on Sunday. It's, uh, it's fine. I think it's fine. Oh, Todd was there too. Todd was there too. The Chicago show was his first, and I really thought it was a great time. So Todd, somehow his schedule with his work has landed him in great spots. He, he hung out with us in Louisville, and that was kind of an extended work trip, and then he hung out with us in Chicago, also an extended work trip. So that's awesome that the timeline works out. Um, Greg's go-to karaoke song was uh, – there was two of them um, – the, I'll give you one, and then I'll let Greg talk about the other one. But "Babies Got Back," I think from Sir Mix-a-Lot, that was his one. And then uh, I'll let you, I'll let Greg tell you what the other one is. So, David says relationships are paramount. I agree. The people in this hobby are great. Hanging out with James, unfortunately, probably didn't see me in my best i'm going to redeem myself i will go to san francisco wind up 2024 uh as long as everything pans out and i will do my best to not get <laughs> sick so i can hang out with james um and everybody there there we go and y'all met dane because of this wonderful hobby you're welcome there you go that's very cool. Very humble of you, Dane. Uh, oh, shoot. That's right. Tim also got a free watch, which he's um, 325 on when I sold it. He must have already sold it. So he got a free watch through Citizen and Grey Natal. That was a great meetup. Plus, we got free pizza and drinks. Uh, you declined when I offered you my SKX 171, so I knew you were really sick. Uh, I don't even remember that, dude. I was messed up. Um, and weirdly enough, you may have had some stuff that probably would have made me feel better, but um, and what I can't, I can't do that. So, but next year, it's gonna be the third time in San Francisco. I need to redeem myself, not get sick. I pre that, that's my next goal. Everyone was awesome in Chicago. That is cool. Yeah, I hung out with Paul there too. Got to meet up with him. I got to meet up with so many people. I missed Leslie. Somehow I missed Leslie. We just, we didn't meet up, which I was bummed out about that because I knew she was there. Greg had told me that she was there. Oh, here's the second song. Greg says his second song, first one, Sir Mix-a-Lot, Baby Got Back. Second one, Bon Jovi, Living on a Prayer. There you go. All right, I think we're past an hour, so let's, we can kill the lights. We can check some loom on the table over here. See if we got some loom. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see that. But let me switch to this view. So there you go. You can see some loom. The loom is good. The chat was good. The company was good. The whiskey was pretty good. I didn't tell you what it was, but uh, it's a local whiskey. It's far too expensive, but it is delicious. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next video.